Welcome to another episode of On the Red Carpet on Tick Podcast. Today we have Derek Bradley, CEO of Aurora 44, developers of the indie console exclusive Ashen. Welcome to the show, Derek. Thank you very much. Yeah, great to be here. Yeah, definitely. Uh, you know, a lot of fans are looking forward to Ashen. Um, it's one of the highlighted games within the idea Xbox program. And, you know, as an RPG guy, something that's really captured my attention. So, I'm just going to hop right in and just just ask you, what gave you the inspiration to create Ashen and why make an RPG? Yeah, sure. Well, um, okay, well, the, the, the first inspiration we had, and um, this is Leighton and I, uh, who originally kind of came up with the idea, we were um, working on The Hobbit at Witter Digital, and uh, one day we came together at lunch, and we sort of decided that we were going to, we, we kind of were interested in making a game, and we came together one lunchtime, and we decided we were just going to pitch ideas at each other blind and we pitched this idea at each other and it, it lined up so perfectly that we were like this is right this feels right let's let's do this thing <laughs> right. so, so so that's sort of um yeah I, I think that's pretty much how it, how it started and we we kind of uh you know worked on it in our spare time for like about a about a year and uh after that we uh we we eventually decided to quit our jobs and and do the whole thing and so we got a few more people involved we quit our, quit our jobs and we started aurora 44. um wow. And yeah, I mean, as far as making it an RPG, I think it's just that we we love games, you know, and this right. is the kind of game we wanted to make. We, and I think it comes right back to that original pitch. When we sat down and we thought about what we wanted to do, it was just like, what is the thing that you really love playing, you know? And what are the things that make sense to you in games? And what are the things that you want to change about games? So yeah, I, I think that's pretty much it. I wonder, you said that you worked on The Hobbit, correct? The movie The Hobbit? Yeah, yeah, the, the 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 Hobbit trilogy. Yeah. Wow, that's amazing. I'm pretty sure that might have inspired the direction of the game because it seems set up in a world not like the Hobbit, but kind of like that visceral. Um, I won't say medieval, but like that fantasy world where you have swords and shields and creatures and monsters out there. Do you think that might have played the role in it? Well, you know, I'd, I'd even go as far back as the Lord of the Rings because I know Leighton said this to me, and this is I, I sort of share the sentiment that uh, growing up in New Zealand, uh, the Lord of the Rings was a big thing, and it's it's one of the things that drove us to get into visual effects in the first place. Mm. Uh, so I'd, I'd say you know games and kind of being around that are, are the two big influences mm. for us. Right. So yeah, th those would be very important. Wow, that's that's a very interesting thing to learn. Um, you know, a lot of times you never know where a lot of the developers come from unless you ask them about some of their background and you'd be surprised that a lot of the projects and a lot of the things that a lot of you guys work on and how somehow you've gotten into making games so it's really cool to know that you guys had you know a hand in making such a great film trilogy and then to turn around and have this game this rpg that a lot of the fans are looking forward to come to the xbox one so i'm, I'm very excited but with any yes. rpg um, you know, one of the things that's important is customization, uh, whether it's the armor, your look, your weapons, any powers or perks or abilities is highly important in any RPG. So, you know, what did you guys bring to the table customization wise for your characters and character abilities within the game? Okay, so yeah, you'll, you'll be able to customize your character, you know, you'll be able to be male or female, um, change hairstyles, things like that at, at, at the start of the game. And uh, when you get into the game, um, stuff like the clothing you choose to wear, the armor you choose to wear, even the weapons you choose to have equipped are going to be really important for how people like uh, perceive you and, and, and uh, how that all lines up. Mm. Um, and, and, and so it's very important to us that, that, that players can really put their mark on the game uh, from that aspect. But um, the, the kind of more interesting one to me at the moment is um, our, our perk system because I was always a big fan of um, games like Fallout, their, their special system where the perks all had kind of stories behind them. And I really enjoyed reading those and kind of uh, not necessarily always choosing the most optimized per perk for like my, my DPS or, or, <laughs> or anything like that, you know. Right, right. <laughs> yeah, like I mean, you'd, you'd often choose like uh, the one that I think there was like a weird wasteland one or something like that where it just made things kind of go crazy wow. out there. Uh, or like the there was a lady killer perk that makes you more dangerous against the opposite sex, which is pretty strange. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the, and, and you know that I think that reaction you just had. I mean, it's the kind of thing you can kind of just laugh at, and, and that it's it's kind of fun to be a part of that world and to build those things into your character. Right. So, I mean, for us, um, 
Yeah, we, we very much strive to, to make sure there's some story behind your character progression and your character customization. And for that reason, we've made it that um, the, the whole perk system is tied into talismans, which you have to go out and, and, and craft, so to speak. So uh, taking the example of a lucky rabbit's foot, um, you would go out into the world and you'd have to uh, hunt a rabbit or two and you'd have to get the materials required to make a lucky rabbit's foot. You'd then need to bring this back to your town where uh, one of your NPCs could craft it. And this ties in directly into our multiplayer where you're actually actively going out and saving NPCs and bringing them back to your town. So it, it, it kind of makes everything kind of line up. Yeah. Right. Now, as for customization, obviously, you have this perk system with the, you know, NPC, or not NPCs, actually, but the, the multiplayer aspect of the game. Um, mm-hmm. It's something that's very different, something that's, that's never really, actually, that I've heard have been done before. Um, you know, Brandon has spoken about it, so I'm going to let him go into a little bit more detail on, on that particular subject. Yeah, we were talking, you know, earlier about the the multiplayer and, you know, what passive multiplayer means. Um, many fans, you know, may recognize this from, from other games, but if you could just explain to them what passive multiplayer means and what that'll mean for this game. Yeah, um, I think you're very right. Like, passive multiplayer is kind of like a new thing in, in a lot of ways. So uh, a lot of games are doing it differently, uh, where Dark Souls does, like, you know, the little... Uh, messages that you can get and stuff like that. Um, for us, it's very much more like Journey, where you can uh, you can weave in 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 and each other, in and out of each other's worlds without lobbies, without any kind of uh, conscious choice to do so. Uh, you'll just be running along in the world, and someone else will uh, kind of run up next to you. And as long as you stay with you know, if you stay close enough, uh, more or less, if you can see each other, you'll stay connected. And so that's um, you know conceptually very important to us because it's it's very much your choice to decide that you want to be near someone and you want to um, sort of, sort of sh- share a little bit of your game with them because you don't really need to. If for some reason uh, someone doesn't get along with you, um, they, they can kind of just uh, veer off and go their own way and they'll naturally just disconnect. So it, it's very passive in the sense that you don't have to do anything. It's kind of like meeting people out in the real world. Uh, th- th- there's sort of no lobbies to be a, a barrier towards uh, the experiences you could have. Hmm. Yeah, that's, that's very nice. I mean, when you look at the trailer, uh, there was a female and a male character, and it looks like that was, you know, a multiplayer sequence. And, you know, at the end of the sequence, it looks like the, the male character dies and the female character goes on, you know, to, to continue their quest. Um, is that example of what, what we see in multiplayer? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, in that case, he's, he's kind of just uh, exploring some ruins, and he comes along another character. Uh, yeah, he comes across another character, and they cooperate, open a door, and they they go into some dungeons. Unfortunately, he dies, but we we switch perspectives, and then we follow the girl who um, happens to make it out alive and kind of continues her journey. So, yeah, I, I would say that's very much the kind of pace that you would have, and it, it sort of also reflects the game that it'll be kind of it, it will be difficult to keep two people um, together. So um, when you do eventually do that and you, you do manage to bring someone back to your town or um, it, achieve something like defeat a boss together, um, it'll be something that you sort of remember and it'll be like an organic thing that you've actually created yourself and you've had a lot of, like it's actually been your choice to do it. It wasn't something that you were sort of shoehorned into. I think that this game is like huge, honestly. I mean, I'm, look, I'm listening to what you're saying. You have... I'm pretty sure you're going to have a great death of story. Um, I mean, most RPGs revolve around stories, you know, so you're going to have this story driven game. You have great customization. You have characters that you save that can actually help you, you know, build your own town, your own little home. And actually the people you save gives your main character perk benefits, you know, along with the things that you're already customizing. On top of that, you have this multiplayer where you could just be walking around and meet other people. That is huge. And then the icing on the cake is that I read this is open world. Is, is that correct? Yeah, absolutely. We're, we're kind of doing a little bit of all of it. And, you know, the, the interesting thing is, though, um, it's a really um, exciting time for indies at the moment because you can you can make smaller games, but... If you can pull it off, you can also do a lot of bigger things because of engines like Unity and Unreal that are kind of giving indies these amazing tools. I mean, Unreal are pushing their open world stuff so much at the moment that it makes our job so much easier. 
I mean, in terms of open world, we can con concentrate on on making something that looks good more than we have to worry about uh, streaming and performance and stuff like that, which is great for us. I mean, on a small team, we don't have to we don't have to dedicate like three guys to that, you know? Right. Yeah. That's that's really sick, man. Looking so forward to this title. Now, with any RPG, it is you have to have a great theme, you know, sound, sound effects, the atmosphere, all those things play a part, you know. Do you guys have um, like a great soundtrack or do you guys have great theme music or what is the sound quality? What is the ambiance of the game going to be like? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we, we, we do actually uh, plan to put out a full soundtrack and stuff like that so people can, um, you know, enjoy that on its own too. But oh, um, wow. what we have is, um, yeah, and uh, what we have is a, a band from Nashville um, called Foreign Fields there um, and we've been with them forever. Um, we uh, originally found them from uh, this video I was watching uh, just because it was linked somewhere. And um, it was about this guy uh, forging an axe in his in, in a cabin up in the up in the woods somewhere, sort of surrounded by snow, sort of. Uh, yeah. And, and it was very sort of mysterious in that way. <laughs> and um, th they had um, and, and, and they were just the backing track to this um, to, to this um, video about somebody um, making an axe from scratch, oh, wow. the old fashioned way. And um, I heard it and I emailed them and this was when we were still working at Weta Digital on, on stuff like The Hobbit and um, yeah, I, I just emailed them. We hadn't sort of um, seriously started making the game yet in earnest. We, we were still like sort of prototyping and just playing around with stuff. And so we've been working with them for that long um, that we have kind of, we've got a really good relationship where uh, we're so in sync uh, and, and the stuff that they make just fits the game like, like a glove. Um, nice. And you know, as as far as the the music they're creating, they're just creating beautiful and ambient stuff that can kind of it, it it doesn't sort of pull you out of the game, and that's kind of the the most important thing to us right. is that it should kind of be quite sneaky and almost just just get into the the edges the the, the, the kind of peripherals of your of of your experience and and add to it. Right, David. Oh yeah, I've actually got uh, I've got a couple of questions for you. Um, firstly, I wanted I want to go ahead and say that I'm actually really excited to play this game. That's not my question, but I wanted to say <laughs> that. Um, my first question is because uh, art is a very important thing, especially with any video game or any any medium. Um, you really have to have the art down. Uh, the first thing that I really wanted to ask you was the art direction of the game looks so fantastic and it looks so beautiful. Was there any type of inspiration, or did you guys have any type of idea going into it? What you wanted the art direction to be um, and secondly with it being an RPG you know RPGs are ever expanding and constantly evolving do you guys have any any plans to bring any type of DLC or expansions to the game at a later date yeah sure I mean like um, for the art style uh, it's, it's a really good question and you know if, if a year ago I would have been able to give you even a year and a half ago I would have been able to give you much more clear inspirations because um, what's happened since then is that things have sort of evolved on their own, you know, right. and, and like we've, we've iterated on it so much that it's really become its own thing. Um, I, I would say, though, like games that have inspired us would be uh, stuff like uh, Super Brothers, Sword and Sorcery, uh, Shadow of the Colossus, mm. uh, e even all the old the old Zelda games. Um, stuff like that has been a, a huge influence for us. But um, at the end of the day, we, we, we've really spent so much time um, iterating now that uh, when you know, if somebody new comes on and we need to teach them the art style, we don't kind of point at anyone else anymore. Right. We just kind of say, "Well, this is <laughs> right. what this is what Ashton looks like," and and and, and try to do this thing. So, um, yeah, it, it, it's actually in a really nice place now um, in terms of that. And what was your second question again? It was um, DLC and and sort of expansions after the fact. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, we, we don't really have uh, plans for DLC at the moment. And the, the reason for that is we're really trying to create um, something that's a bit of a one-stop shop. You know, um, when, when you play Ashen and, and you, you open the box, you're, you're getting kind of the the the, uh, the final product. And th this thing is kind of kind of like a self-contained uh, world that you're, you're kind of opening up. So we haven't really got plans for DLC. I mean, I, I can say that might change if, if we find a way that we think, you know, we wish we could have added this into the game. I don't think anything would stop us <laughs> as far as like right. put, putting a bunch of development time and, and, and getting it right, you know, but, but for right now, we, we, we're so fo focused on that core, um, the core story and making this like a, a standalone world that kind of does its own thing um, that we haven't necessarily got plans for DLC right now. That's cool. That's cool. So, I mean, obviously, with with any 
indie developer that we speak to, we always try to ask them, how has their experience been with the ID at Xbox program? Um, you know, we're, we're good friends with Chris Charla and this guy just, you know, goes the distance for indie developers. So how has your experience been working with the ID at Xbox program? And, you know, while developing the game, how has it been working with the Xbox console? Mm. Well, I mean, you know, the, the, the idea at Xbox guys, you know, um, pretty much all of them. I, I, I think they're, they're a good gang of guys because they truly love games. And I'm, I'm sure you guys could, could <laughs> right. agree with this. Like, right. the, the reason they're doing it is that they love games. So they've been absolutely amazing to work with. I mean, it, you can see that the, their passion lies here. They're all, they all play games. The, and it's it's really easy to talk to them and to figure things out. So, I mean, in terms of um, working with them, it's um, it's pretty much a dream come true. Like you know, uh, they're some of the best people in the industry. So it, it, it's absolutely amazing. Um, and as far as working with the Xbox console, we're we're only now sort of getting into um, the full integration with the Xbox console. So I I couldn't really say too much about mm -hmm. it. But mm -hmm. I mean. I, I, what we've found so far is it's it's so much easier than previous uh, generations because I mean I, I I did previously work in games too right. and um, yeah the, the 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 last generation of consoles were a lot harder to, <laughs> to do stuff in right. I think that it's it's very easy and, and the, the the kicker with that is that it's making it so much um, easier for indies to do really creative titles on consoles which is amazing and I think that yeah it, it's sort of part of the reason that we're getting this whole um, I don't know, just this, this big push of um, independent games that are quite creative and interesting coming through is is, is just that whole, um, it, it seems to be an attitude in the industry in general coming from, you know, the engines and the the, big, um, the, the, the bigger places like, like Sony and uh, Xbox. And yeah, right. I, I think everybody's kind of doing it, which is great. Yeah, no, definitely. We were actually, I, I don't know, did you get it? Were you at E3? Yeah, absolutely. We, we we were actually on stage at the um, at the at the Xbox presentation right. at E3. So yeah, right. would you get a chance to go to the idea Xbox program party? You weren't there, were you? I did. No. I did. No, we, we, we didn't. Um, we, we we didn't actually show Ashton there, but um, but but we we definitely went along and, and tried out the games. Um, it was it was pretty fun. What's funny is that we were there. <laughs> we were at the party as well and uh we were in the we back could've, we could have rubbed shoulders yeah we could have yeah. rubbed shoulders I, I, we had no idea like we bumped there was so many guys there were so many developers but you know one of the things that you said was the creativity of these indie games is really what's setting them apart from a lot of the bigger titles and you know, uh, when we were there, we spoke to so many developers and everybody has so many ideas and, you know, so many different inspirations. It was really, really awesome to be in an environment like that. So I definitely understand where you're coming from when it comes to creativity and things like that. I think that as any developer, and this is only my opinion, but I think as any developer, you you're more likely to take risk than maybe the bigger companies, because the bigger companies, if they take a risk and that game doesn't pan out. And I'm saying that that wouldn't be the same for you guys, but if that game doesn't pan out, that really hurts them in a way. Whereas an indie developer, to set themselves apart, to be recognized, because a lot of times as an indie, as an indie game, they may get overshadowed by some of the bigger titles. You got to be able to really separate yourself with some really creative stuff. So I think Ashen is definitely one of those titles, along with a few others that we've spoken to or spoken about before. So I'm really excited to, to play this game, and I'm glad that everything's worked out with you and the idea Xbox program. Yeah, so, thanks. I mean, yeah, I completely completely agree with you there, too. I think, um, you know, sometimes you want to play those AAAs, you know, you want that really polished experience, and you want everything to be just the way you remember it kind of thing, and that's perfect when you're playing those. But at the same time, some of the days, you just want to play something new, and, you know, I think that's what the indies are there for. Yeah, yeah. 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 Definitely. I definitely enjoy them. Um, I got one more question um, about the game. Uh, you, you talked about crafting and, and building weapons and things like that. We noticed that there are very large creatures and monsters in the game. How would a, a, a player take down something that large um, when I didn't notice, you know, that uh, many that many variety of, of weapons in, within the game? I saw an axe and maybe like a shield or something like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's actually a great question because, you know, I think a lot of games, the way that they make the world is they almost make the player first and then they figure out, like, kind of 
what can this player do with the world? We want them to interact with everything in the world. So the world's almost like built around a player. Whereas for us, we're trying to build this big, scary, dark world and we're kind of dropping the player into it. Mm. So, you know, there might be something like if you were to go try swim next to a humpback whale and it flipped its flipper just the wrong way, you'd probably turn into jelly, you know? <laughs> <laughs> right. right. So I think it's more that kind of thing where you're not necessarily going to be able to kill them because they are just huge. You're, you're more like a cockroach, like, you know, right. crawling around its feet. <laughs> but, and, and there'll certainly be things you can do with it, but we, we're definitely playing with those expectations because um, it's kind of interesting. Yeah, we found that dynamic that even when I step into a game, I'm always like, oh, how can I kill that giant dragon? Or look at that mountain over there that's moving slightly. Right. Surely I can like interact with that thing in some way. <laughs> and, and for us, we, we, we're definitely going to make ways to interact with them. But I think it would be a pretty tall order to kill that, that uh, <laughs> sky giant. <laughs> right, right, right. No, that's that's crazy. And that's really an interesting dynamic because usually in in RPGs, you always get these characters that are so powerful that they can do it. You know, yeah, that's their mission. That's their, that's their, their the thing. Guy. Right. They take out the most powerful thing, but this is, I won't say realistic, but it's a little bit more, you know, based in reality where it's like, listen, this thing is, you know, a mega ton of a, of a creature of an animal. You don't just walk up to it and hit it with an axe and think you're going to do, uh, you know, a hundred thousand points worth of damage <laughs> on it. It's not going to happen. You, you get smacked around if you're not careful. So that's, that's really, really cool. That's really cool. Um, yeah, cool. So obviously we would like to know, uh, when is the game going to release? I know a lot of fans are looking forward to that. And what do you, what do you guys think the retail for it would be? You know, we don't really have a, a release date or a retail for it at the moment, so I can't really answer that one uh, too, okay. too clearly for you. Um, okay. it, it really depends on how things go for us. Um, you know, we've the, the the way we've kind of tackled our development so far, and this is why you, you're getting all these sort of creative things out of us, is that we've kept the studio really small at the start, like really tiny, just a few people. Right. And um, we're starting to ramp up now that, that things are kind of set in place, but we wanted to make sure there was a lot of personality. And because things are ramping up now, um, our timelines are, 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 are sort of continually shifting. Um, you know, um, so, so development's going amazingly, but um, at the same time, it's probably going to be uh, quicker than we think, just because uh, we're, we're used to working in a much smaller team now. Right. But um, we, we don't we don't really have a solid timeline as it stands. Um, do you have um, any idea how long the game may be, gameplay wise? How many hours? Yeah, absolutely. You know, I, I can give you a pretty good breakdown of that. Uh, and, and we're looking at sort of, if you were to just do the core stuff and like kind of run through it, we're looking at about 13 hours. Uh, we're looking at your average playthrough to be somewhere around 20. And if you did kind of like a whole bunch of extra stuff and things like that, you'd probably be looking at about 30 hours. Wow. Wow. That's awesome for indie. I don't know. When's the last indie game I played that was 30 hours? <laughs> that's crazy. That's an, that's an amazing thing. It really is. I think a lot of people that listen today um, will definitely be keeping an eye out. You know, we tried to bring attention to the Xbox community about the, you know, indie developers that's bringing their games to the Xbox platform. And they need to look at that because a lot of times, like, you know, again, guys look at Halo, they look for Fable, you know, but you have these gems right under your nose. And a lot of times (laughs) you just don't either get the advertisement that you want or you don't stay on the front page of the Xbox um, dashboard long enough to, you know, get what you want. So if we could do anything to help you guys out, we would do our damn just to do it. So I really appreciate you coming on, Derek. Um, before I get out of here, does anybody have any last questions? David? Uh, one of the things that uh, that I like to do in the community is I like to get uh, get a copy of the game and actually play it kind of with the community, show it off. Obviously not show everything, um, but just to kind of give the community a sense of what the game's about and kind of what they can expect for it. Um, another thing that I really like to do is to have part of the development team that worked on that game in the chat so they can kind of conversate with the community and answer any questions or you know anything that gets brought up. Would you guys be interested in doing something like that with us in the in the future whenever the game actually releases? Oh, yeah. I think one of the things about, you know, this being our baby is we, we, we're we very keen on doing all that kind of stuff. We we love, we love that interaction. So, yeah, absolutely. Awesome. That's awesome. awesome, man. Definitely. So, guys, you heard it here first. We will be able to get a Let's Play 
with uh, Derek and Ashen on Twitch sometime in the future whenever we get a chance to get that uh, title released. And you guys will find out definitely on TICGM. We will let you know when we get all that information, release date, pricing, everything. So keep an eye out for that. Definitely share this information and get the word out about Ashen. Big title coming to Xbox One. It's a console exclusive. It's going to be on Xbox One and PC. And hopefully we'll get it um, either in December or before holiday season because holiday <laughs> season is crazy. So I definitely want people, I don't want this game to get overshadowed. So definitely, if not, we can always look forward to it next year. But whenever the game is perfect and it's polished and it's ready to go, that's the most important thing. So keep an eye out for that. So Derek, thanks, man. Thanks again for coming on. We really appreciate it. And we can't wait to get you and Ashen over on our Twitch channel to play some games. Yeah, thank you very much for having me. It's been great. Awesome. Thanks. Awesome. Thanks a lot. And tell your team thank you and good luck on the rest of your work. Yeah, thank you.